In the village of Kete, the friends and relatives of the dead man, Mayana, have been preparing the ceremony for several days now. Mayana was a Puang, that is, a noble, and therefore the ceremony must be very special, attention paid to every single detail. Once they have finished decorating the village, they must build another one not far from here to house the guests. That is where the funeral will be held. For Mayana's family, this will mean absolute ruin. And it'll be several generations before the debt, some $26,000 is fully paid off. To raise the money, they have had to sell rice fields and cattle and request loans from the wealthier relatives. But they must impress the gods, and if Mayana is satisfied, the family will be sure to go to heaven. Kete is a typical Toraya village composed of two parallel rows of houses built on stilts and called Tongkonan, which symbolize the union of the family and the clan. The enormous roofs are made of layers of bamboo cane sealed with a vegetable paste extracted from the bamboo itself, which makes them waterproof, absolutely vital when the rainy season arrives. The facade is decorated with geometric paintings and each color has a meaning. Red symbolizes human life, white is the color of bones, a symbol of purity, yellow represents the blessing of God and power, and black means death and darkness. A carving of a buffalo head decorates the central part of each house. Numerous horns from animals sacrificed at past funerals give an idea of the wealth of the family and are tied to the central pillar that supports the roof. These houses are closely linked with Toraja traditions, and one of their functions is to serve as a constant reminder of the authority of the noble families whose descendants have maintained them and may not sell them. But the strangest thing about this architecture is the shape of the roofs, and there are a number of theories about the origin of this. Some say they represent the horns of a buffalo, others that they point the way towards heaven. But the majority believe the roof looks more like a boat, and its pointed ends representing the prow and the stern. The houses face north, possibly because their ancestors came from that direction in boats which, when they arrived, were turned upside down to use as shelters. The origin of the Toraja is to be found in the foothills of the Himalayas, and in the past they were fierce headhunters. After the invasion of the Bugi people 600 years ago, the Toraja were driven into the center of the island while Muslims occupied the coasts and the lowlands. The name Toraja means men of the mountains. The inhabitants of Sulawesi have always had a very close relationship with the sea. Along the beaches, they continue to build in the traditional way the Pinisi, the famous Indonesian boats that for centuries now have crossed these seas, trading and transporting goods among the 14,000 islands that make up the Indonesian archipelago. These men belong to the Bugi ethnic group, considered the best boat builders and sailors in the Indian Ocean. Such was their supremacy in these seas that in the 17th and 18th centuries, they established important trade centers in what today is Singapore, the island of Borneo, and the Malaysian Peninsula, controlling marine traffic in the South China and Java seas. But there is another ethnic group which lives in even closer contact with the sea. In fact, they could not conceive of life without it. That group is the Bajau. At the other end of the island in the calm waters of the Gulf of Tomini, these nomads have for centuries conquered the sea. They live out their lives on these small, fragile boats called lepers where they are born 
marry, reproduce, and die. In them, they move along the coast, propelled by the winds and the currents, and rarely set foot on dry land. Such is their affinity with the sea, that when they come on land, they feel unhappy. They say that, just as a turtle or a fish would die if it were stranded on the coast, without the sea, they too would die, for here they feel they are free. Their origins remain unknown, though some anthropologists believe they come from the south of the Malaysian peninsula. Apparently, at the start of the 17th century, they were forced to abandon their homes due to the constant tribal conflicts and political instability. They sailed along the coast of Borneo, then headed south of the Philippines, eventually arriving on the eastern coast of Sulawesi. They, however, claim their ancestors set out in search of their lost princess. According to this legend, the princess was bathing on the shore when a sudden storm carried her out to sea. She managed to cling to some tree trunks and for weeks drifted before finally reaching Sulawesi. When the Bajau found her, they decided to remain and live here. Since then, countless legends have surrounded these gypsies of the sea. In the 18th century, they contributed to the maritime expansion of the kingdom of Siriwijaja, and two centuries before had fought to defend the Sultan of Malacca. Some of them became famous pirates, spreading fear among the traders, and their journeys across the seas became legendary. For centuries, they held sway over this blue desert. <laughs>